Welcome back. In this video, let's understand about the all important event loop in Node.js. Let me begin by reiterating a few points about async code execution. First, JavaScript is a synchronous blocking single threaded language. Second, to make async programming possible, we need the help of libuv. I hope this is clear to you. Using these two points, let me now paint a picture in your mind as to how code typically executes in the node runtime. On the left, we have the V8 engine, which executes JavaScript code. It comprises of a memory heap and a call stack. Whenever you declare variables or functions, memory is allocated on the heap. Whenever you execute code, functions are pushed into the call stack and when the function returns, it is popped off the call stack. A straightforward last in first out implementation of the stack data structure. On the right, we have libuv. Whenever you execute an async method, it is offloaded to libuv. libuv will then run the task using native async mechanisms of the operating system. And if that is not possible, it will utilize its thread pool to run that task, ensuring the main thread is not blocked. Let's now walk through two simple code snippets and understand how the V8 engine and libuv are used by Node. First, let's take a look at synchronous code execution. On the left, we have a simple code snippet. Three console log statements that log first, second, and third one after the other. Let's now walk through the code as if the runtime is executing it. The main thread of execution always starts in the global scope. So the global function, if you can call it that, is pushed onto the stack. Then on line one, we have a console log statement. The function is pushed onto the stack. And for the sake of understanding the timeline, let's assume this happens at one millisecond. First is logged to the console. Then the function is popped off the stack. Execution comes to line two. Let's say at two milliseconds, log function is again pushed onto the stack. Second is logged to the console and the function is popped off the stack. Finally, execution is on line three and at three milliseconds, function is pushed onto the stack. Third is logged to the console and the function is popped off the stack. There is no more code to execute and global is also popped off. This is pretty much how synchronous code execution can be visualized with the node runtime. Next, let's take a look at asynchronous code execution. On the left, we have another code snippet. Three log statements like before, but this time, the second log statement is within a callback function passed to fs.read file. Let us once again walk through the code as if the runtime is executing it. The main thread of execution always starts in the global scope. So the global function is pushed onto the stack. Execution comes to line one. At one millisecond, console.log is pushed onto the stack. First is logged in the console and the function is popped off the stack. Execution now moves on to line two. At two milliseconds, the read file method gets pushed onto the stack. In the earlier lecture, I mentioned that read file is an async operation that is offloaded to libuv. So what happens now is that the callback function is handed over to libuv. JavaScript then simply pops off the read file method from the call stack because its job is done as far as execution of line two is concerned. In the background, libuv starts to read the file contents on a separate thread. At three milliseconds, JavaScript proceeds to line five. It pushes the log function onto the stack, third gets logged to the console, and the function is popped off the stack. Now there is no more user written code in the global scope to execute, so the call stack is empty. At about four milliseconds, let's say that the file read task is completed in the thread pool. 
the associated callback function is now pushed onto the call stack. Within the callback function, we have the log statement. That is pushed onto the call stack. Second is logged to the console and the function is popped off. As there are no more statements to execute in the callback function, that is popped off as well. No more code to run. So the global function as we call it is also popped off the stack. The console output is going to read first, third, and then second. This is how the node runtime executes an asynchronous code snippet that uses fs.read file. Similar execution holds good for other async methods as well. I hope it is clear to you as to how code is executed in the node runtime. Now, if you've understood this far, let me ask you a few questions. Whenever an async task completes in LibUV, at what point does node decide to run the associated callback function on the call stack? Does it wait for the call stack to be empty or does it interrupt the normal flow of execution to run the callback function? What about async methods like setTimeout and setInterval, which also delay the execution of a callback function? If two async tasks such as setTimeout and fs.readFile complete at the same time, how does node decide which callback function to run first on the call stack? Does one get priority over the other? At the moment, we simply don't know. Just when we thought we understood how code is executed behind the scenes in the node runtime, it seems to have become more complex. Well, let me tell you, all these questions can be answered by understanding about the core part of libuv, which is the event loop. Now, what is the event loop? Well, technically, it is just a C program. But you can think of event loop as a design pattern that orchestrates or coordinates the execution of synchronous and asynchronous code in Node.js. And the way we are going to understand how the event loop works is a two-step process. In this video, we will take a look at a visual representation of the event loop. That will give you a brief overview of the different parts that come together in the event loop. And then over the next few videos, we will conduct various experiments with code to better understand the visual representation. All right, here is how we can visualize the event loop. I would like to pause and thank Deepal Jayasekara, who has written an article where I first came across a similar representation. It has been very useful for me, and now my job is to make sure you easily understand this as well. Now the event loop is a loop that is alive as long as your Node.js application is up and running. In every iteration of the loop, we come across six different queues. Each queue holds one or more callback functions that need to be eventually executed on the call stack. And of course, the type of callback functions are different for each queue. First, we have the timer queue. This contains callbacks associated with set timeout and set interval. Second, we have the IO queue. This contains callbacks associated with all the async methods that we have seen so far. For example, methods associated with the FS and HTTP modules. Third, we have the check queue. Now this contains the callbacks associated with a function called set immediate. This function is specific to Node and is not something you would come across when writing JavaScript for the browser. Fourth, we have the close queue. This contains callbacks associated with the close event of an async task. Finally, we have a micro task queue at the center. This is actually two separate queues. The first queue is called next tick queue and contains callbacks associated with a function called process.nextTick, which is again specific to Node.js. The second queue is the promise queue, which contains callbacks that are associated with the native promise in JavaScript. And one very important point to note is that timer, IO, check and close queues are all part of libuv. The two microtask queues, however, 
are not part of LibUV. Hopefully, the color difference conveys that. Nevertheless, they're still part of the node runtime and play an important role in the order of execution of callbacks. Speaking of which, let's understand that next. The arrowheads are already a giveaway, but it is very easy to get confused. So let me explain the priority order of the queues. First, you should know that all user-written synchronous JavaScript code takes priority over asynchronous code that the runtime would like to execute. Which means only after the call stack is empty, the event loop comes into picture. Within the event loop though, the sequence of execution follows certain rules and I will warn you, there are quite a few rules you have to wrap your head around. Let's go over them one at a time. Step one, any callbacks in the micro task queues are executed. First, tasks in the next tick queue and only then tasks in the promise queue. Step two, all callbacks within the timer queue are executed. Step three, callbacks in the micro task queues if present are executed after the execution of every callback in the timer queue. Again, first tasks in the next tick queue and then tasks in the promise queue. Step four, all callbacks within the IO queue are executed. Step five, callbacks in the micro task queues if present are executed. Next tick queue followed by promise queue. Step six, all callbacks in the check queue are executed. Step seven, callbacks in the micro task queues if present are executed after the execution of every callback in the check queue. Again, first tasks in the next tick queue and then tasks in the promise queue. Step eight, all callbacks in the close queue are executed. Step nine, for one final time in the same loop, the micro task queues are executed. Next tick queue followed by promise queue. At this point, if there are more callbacks to be processed, the loop is kept alive for one more run and the same steps are repeated. On the other hand, if all callbacks are executed and there is no more code to process, the event loop exits. This is the role LibUV's event loop plays in the execution of async code in Node.js. I'm also hopeful that we now have answers to the questions we had a few minutes ago. For our first question, the answer is that callback functions are executed only when the call stack is empty. The normal flow of execution will not be interrupted to run a callback function. For our second question, we now know that set timeout and set interval callbacks are given first priority. For the third question, we now understand that timer callbacks are executed before IO callbacks, even if both are ready at the exact same time. Apart from this, we also learned about a few other queues that have their own priority. But this visual representation here is what I want you to imprint in your mind as it is how Node executes async code under the hood. If it is now clear as to what the event loop is, over the next few videos, let's conduct a few different experiments to understand and verify the order of execution in the event loop. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.